Hi guys, my name is Ashley. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to teach you how to knit my simple everyday eyelet cardigan. It's a great drop shoulder cardigan. And I've got a free PDF with the pattern that you can download. Just click the link in the video description. And it's meant as a guide to show you how to knit this sweater in any yarn weight and needle size. So you can take any gauge and figure out the cast on stitches for each section. So we knit the left front, the right front, the back and the sleeves all separately, and then we seam everything together and knit the collar. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step exactly how to make this. I will show you and walk you through how to determine cast on stitches based on your gauge. So you could make this in a super bulky weight yarn. You could make this in worsted. You could make this in DK. You could make multiple versions in different yarn weights and needle size. Cause I'm, again, I'm gonna show you how to take your gauge and determine your cast on stitches for any section. Don't be intimidated, it's fairly simple, and it'll really give you a great foundation for how to knit an uneasy drop shoulder cardigan. All right, let's get started. Okay, here is what the pattern looks like once you've printed it out. Um, you can click the link in the video description to go to my website where you can enter your email address and then the page will redirect to the PDF. Um, okay, so these instructions are meant to be a guide and they are written so that you can knit this cardigan in any yarn weight and needle size, hence any gauge you would like. Um, I knit this with US 9 millimeter 13, US 13 knitting needles with Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. This is considered a super bulky weight yarn. You can use whatever needle size and yarn weight you would like. I tend to knit with bulky yarn and bigger needles um, just so you can see things a little bit better and the project goes a little faster. But you could go down in yarn size and need a needle weight. So I've given some guides for sizing. Again, you don't have to make this exactly how I have it written. It's meant to be a guide for you, okay? So I primarily followed a size three, which means you look at the third number in a sequence of numbers if you're knitting a size three. If you're knitting a size six, you look at the sixth number. So when I have here size one, two, three, four, five, six, you can look and see the measurements um, according to the diagram for those specific sections. So you're gonna wanna cast on stitches according to your gauge, right? So I go through and we um, calculate the cast on stitches for the left and right fronts according to your gauge. So once you have your gauge, you're gonna enter that gauge here and put in the front width. So I am 10 stitches per four inches, so I wrote that down, and I want my left front to be eight inches wide based on the size that I was knitting. I followed like a size two for that front. Um, and then you solve for um, cast on stitches. So 10 divided by four times eight is 20 stitches. So I solved for cast on stitches and then I had to adjust the cast on stitches for my stitch multiple. Okay. So everything is written to help you determine cast on stitches for the back, for the fronts, for the sleeves with the calculations in an example. Um, so you know what to do for your gauge. Okay, so I hope that helps and let's get started. Okay, I am going to cast on 21 stitches with my nine millimeter US 13 knitting needle and my Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. I am going to make a slip knot and cast on the rest of my stitches using the long tail cast on. One, two, three, I've got my 21 stitches cast on. This will be the right side of the work. We're gonna turn the work and do a one by one rib. And I'm gonna start by knitting one, purling one, and repeat that to one stitch before the end. And then I will knit a stitch. When you do a ribbing with an odd number of stitches, your last stitch is the same stitch 
as your first stitch. So I should be, end, if I start with a knit, I should end with a knit. So I'm just continuing my knit one, purl one, to one stitch before the end, and then I will knit the last stitch. Knit, last stitch, turn. Now I'm back to the right side of the work. This time we are going to purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, all the way to the end, and we'll end with a purl stitch. But basically now we're knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. So you can see that's the purl stitch, that's the knit stitch. So continue this. You're gonna repeat rows one and two until you get to about three inches and you're going to end after a wrong side row. So I will see you back here once I've finished my ribbing. Okay, so I have finished my ribbing for about three inches here and um, I have ended after a wrong side row. So the right side of the work is facing me and you can tell by the way the cast on looks. This is the right side. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my staggered eyelet stitch. Um, and again, it is an eight row multiple. So you'll knit rows one through eight, and then you'll continue repeating it until a certain length. Okay, so for row one, we're just gonna knit. So just knit row one. Then we're gonna flip the work. And we are, for row two, we are just going to purl. Purl across row two. Okay, we're gonna turn the work and we're gonna begin row three. Okay, and two of the rows are working the eyelet. So we work the eyelet on row two, on row three, and then we work the eyelet on row seven. So we are on a row three now, and we are going to simply knit three, one, two, three, and then here is our repeat. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two, one, two. And then we continue the knit two together, yarn over, knit two, until we get to the last two stitches. So here we go. Knit two together, yarn over, and yarn over is simply bringing the yarn over, that is a stitch, so we decrease the stitch, but then add it back. Knit two, one, two. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two, one, two. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two. So we finished our repeat and we have two stitches left. We're simply going to knit those. Okay, so now we work three stitches in stockinette stitch, or three rows in stockinette stitch. Okay, so we turn the work and we purl for row four. Row four is purl. And just be careful when you work those yarn overs, when you purl those yarn overs, that you don't drop the stitch. But you work it the same way as you would a regular stitch. You insert your needle the same way and just purl that stitch. It can be a little easier to drop those stitches. Okay, I'm completing my row four. Turn the work. Row five is simply knit. Okay, then we're gonna turn the work. Row six is a purl. 
This is my third row of stockinette. Okay, I just finished row six. I've turned the work and now it's time for row seven. So we've done three rows in stockinette after our, I'm sorry, yeah, three rows of stockinette after our last eyelet row down here. And so now it's time for our next eyelet row and basically it's very similar. We're just switching the location of that yarn over to create that staggered eyelet look. Okay, so it's very similar, but we're just switching the location of that yarn over. So to do this, we're gonna knit one, that's our edge stitch, and then now we're gonna knit two together. Here's our repeat, knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two. And you can see now that our eyelet is already staggered from, it's in a different location than the eyelet in our previous eyelet row. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two, and then our last four stitches, knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Okay, so there's our other eyelet row, row seven, and the final row, row eight, is simply purling. Purl all the way across again, being careful of how you knit or how you purl those yarn overs. Once you get to those yarn overs, just be careful you don't drop that stitch. Purl all the way across. Okay, so here's what it looks like after we finish one um, row one through eight. So basically, all you do now is continue with rows one through eight. So we're gonna knit, purl, and then you do your row three, your other eyelet um, row, which will look like this one down here. So basically you're gonna continue the staggered eyelet stitch until you get to your desired length. I am going to continue for 20 inches. So I will see you back here when my piece is 20 inches. Okay, so I finished knitting my front until I hit about 20 inches. And then you also need to end after a row two or a row six. So we get a nice finished row to bind off on, which will give us um, a great edge for um, seaming. So I ended after a row two, I believe. And um, again, end after a row two or a row six. And then we're just gonna do a standard bind off here. We're gonna bind off straight across on one row. And you're just gonna wanna knit a stitch, knit the second stitch, and then pull that first stitch over, that stitch you just knit and you just continue doing this all the way to the end. And I suggest, you know, doing this a bit loose. Um, you don't wanna bind off really tight because it'll make the work gather too much at the top, but that's how it starts to look when you bind off. And you simply just do this all the way across and I'll show you what it looks like when you have one stitch left. Okay, I'm nearing the end of my bind off row and you continue until you have bound off and you only have one stitch left. And then you're gonna wanna leave a pretty generous tail because that might work out that we could use that tail. I don't know, that's probably about um, 18 inches, maybe two feet or so, just um, so you can use th this end to seam the 
uh, front to the back on the shoulder. All right, so there you go. There's your front, um, and you're gonna wanna make two of those. Okay, so I've got my other front done as well. So go ahead and make two of those. You can continue and do the same thing you just did. And then I'll show you how to um, knit the back. Okay, I'm gonna cast on 61 stitches for the back. Same way, using the long tail cast on method. And um, just make sure you've got enough yarn in front to cast on. The back is much wider than the left and right fronts. So um, basically, just talking through this a little bit, you're gonna be doing the exact same thing you did for the left front. It's just much wider. So you'll just be continuing the repeat for the staggered eyelet stitch um, much longer across the board. Okay, I cast on my 20, uh, sorry, I cast on my 61 stitches for the back. And now I am going to purl one, knit one for the rib. And um, you are going to purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, all the way to the end, nearing the end of my first one by one rib row. I'm ending with the purl, so I'm going to turn my work, and then now we're on the right side of the work. And we're gonna just knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches. So it's knit one, purl one, repeat that to the end, and then knit the last stitch. Nearing the end of my first one by one rib row, I'm ending with the purl. So I'm gonna turn my work. And then now we're on the right side of the work. And we're gonna just knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches. So it's knit one, purl one, repeat that to the end, and then knit the last stitch. Okay, so continue the ribbing just as you did for the left and right fronts. And I will see you back here when it's time to start the staggered eyelet stitch for the back. Okay, I've finished my three inches of ribbing for the back. And now I'm gonna start my staggered eyelet. So same thing, we're just gonna do, um, we're gonna knit row one, purl row two, and then um, row three is our eyelet. So I'm just going to work um, rows one and rows two, and I'll just show you again what to do for row three. Okay, okay so it's time to start row three. Same thing we did before. We just have a longer amount of repeats to do. Um, so we are going to knit three and then start our repeats. Knit two together. Yarn over, knit two. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Okay, I'm nearing the end of row three. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two, and um, now I am done with the repeat and I just need to knit the last two stitches. Okay, so then row five is purl, row six is, I'm sorry, row four is purl, row five is knit, row six is purl, and row seven is the other eyelet row. So you can, um, I'll see you back here then to do a row seven, just to show you that one more time. Okay, so I just finished row six. Now I'm on row seven. Just wanted to show you this one more time for the back. It's the same as we did for the, the fronts, but we just have a longer amount of repeats. We're gonna knit one, knit two together, yarn over, Knit two. Knit two together. Yarn over. Knit two. Knit two together. Whoops, that wasn't right. 
knit two, knit two together, yarn over, knit two, knit two together, yarn over, knit two. And you can take a, a second and look and make sure the positioning of your eyelets is correct. Just to make sure you're not off a stitch. So continue this all the way across. And you should end on a knit two um, that it evenly works out. So you should end on a knit two. All right. So continue knitting the staggered eyelet stitch until your piece measures the same length as the, the left and right fronts. I'm gonna go for um, 20 inches again, and I'm gonna make sure to end after a row two or a row six to bind off on the right side, okay? So I will see you back here then. Okay, so now it's time for me to bind off the back. I ended after a row two, and which is the same row, you just wanna make sure you're binding off after the same row um, you bound off at for the left and the right fronts. And if you bind off after row two or row six, again, it just leaves you this nice finished edge to seam everything with. So we're just gonna bind off the same way that we did the left and the right fronts. You knit two stitches, and then you pull that first stitch over the stitch you just knit, continue all of the way across, and then when you have one stitch left, you just pull that through. So I will see you back here when I am about to finish binding off for the back. All right, I'm gonna snip, but leave a long tail, maybe 18 to 24 inches, so I can weave in, or so I can seam, I can use that same um, piece of yarn to seam the front to the shoulder. So I'm just gonna pull this through. And now I have completed the back. So the back is complete, and now, the next thing to do is to seam. I like to seam um, my fronts to my back at this point um, so I can um, see how the sweater's fitting and make any adjustments to the sleeves if I want. All right, there you go. Okay, when you seam, I've got my left and right fronts here. I've got my back um, face down on the table, so you're gonna wanna make sure you're seaming so that the right sides of the work meet each other like this. Okay, so lay them so that the wrong sides are facing each other. And it's best to seam from the outside in. Okay, so when we seam the left front, we're gonna start on this side. When we seam the right front, we're gonna start on the outside and work our way in over there. That just helps to make sure things are lining up correctly. So. If you have a piece long enough attached to your back, you can use that. And um, you're gonna wanna thread your tapestry needle. Always easier said than done, right? And then I just like to do a simple, I just connect the work on kind of like the outermost edge here, the outer loop, just to connect it. And then I seam through the V's. So see how if we're looking at the work, we can see that there are V's running across. So we're gonna be inserting through the first V there, then the second V, then the third V. Okay, so the right side up V on the top of the work and we're gonna connect that, and then we are gonna work the upside down V's on the bottom. See how the V is upside down there? 
at the bottom. Okay, then we're going to go back up to the top and see we came out of this V, so we're going to go into the next V. And then we're going to go back to the front. We came out of that V there, so we're going to go into the next upside down V here. And you continue going in the V's. And it creates kind of like an invisible seam so that it looks like it's one continuous piece here. I'm trying to get closer so you can see. But it's one continuous piece now. So you continue doing the going in the opposite V's. So let's say you end up going in the V's that are right side up on the bottom, then you need to go down through the upside down V's on the top. So you just have to reverse what you're doing on either side. For some reason, this way makes more sense to me. Okay, so you continue all of the way across, seaming up the shoulder. So this is why it's nice to have a clean kind of knit stitch um, on the first row so you can easily identify what stitch you need to go in and out of. Okay. All right, I've worked all the way across here. I'm almost at the end. I'm gonna go through the last upside down V there on the bottom. And I am going to go through the last one on the top here. And then I am simply going to pull this off and we will tie that and weave those ends in later. Okay, so now you're gonna seam up the other side the same exact way, and if you have a tail left from your one of your fronts, you can use that to seam the right front across this way. So you just thread your needle again in, and we're gonna work in the opposite direction. I'm just gonna connect the pieces by going through the outward loop there, and then I'm just gonna start by going in the upside down V here and the V that's right side up here. And again, same thing we already did, but now we're just doing it in the other direction. And again, starting on the outside and going in just helps the work to line up a little bit better. All right. Okay, now it's time to do the collar. I really recommend knitting the collar after you've seamed the left and right fronts. Um, if you have a collar on whatever sweater you're knitting. Um, this just helps you to try on the sweater and have it fit a little bit better if you're confirming the length and the width of the sweater, of the sleeves you wanna knit. So I suggest getting this part all finished and then trying it on with the collar so that it sits on your body the way it, it should sit and then that'll give you a better fit for determining um, any changes you might want to make on your sleeve, either width or length. Okay, so we're going to pick up stitches starting at the bottom of the right front. Pick up stitches all along the right front. And we're going to pick up three stitches for every four rows along the right front. That just accounts for the fact that it isn't a one-for-one -one ratio when you're knitting perpendicularly to the work. So we are picking up stitches in a different direction of the work. So we don't need as many stitches or else the work won't lay as flat. And then we're going to pick up one stitch for every stitch along the back here, the, the neck. We'll be knitting in the same direction. So we're going to knit 
pick up a stitch for every stitch and then every three stitches for every four rows along the left front so let's start at the bottom right front and I like to go into the very first stitch the bottom I'm gonna create a few extra stitches and you just join the yarn like this and pull it through I'm gonna go through a stitch at the bottom here just to give me a few more stitches because sometimes when you knit a rib you're gonna end up with um, some curling so if we have an extra stitch or two at the bottom it just lays a little bit better okay so now I'm not even gonna count that as as my first stitch as I count but I am just going to insert into the next stitch space here okay all the way through and you can see you can see this stitch space is right here right here right here right here so this was that first stitch from when we were knitting previously So we're going to be going in when we pick up stitches we're going to be going in here we're going to be going in here okay so let's get going so we're going to count this as our first stitch one two skip a row here three That's three stitches for every four rows, not counting that first one. One, two, skip this row, three. So now we've done three stitches for four, four rows again. Skip a stitch. Make sure when you, when you um, are pulling that stitch through that you are bringing the yarn up from underneath and over the needle. That makes sure that the stitch is facing the right direction. Okay, so keep picking up stitches and then once we're done with the ribbing, um, you're gonna just continue picking up stitches. One, two, skip a stitch three you're going to continue all the way and see how when we look we're staying in the same row when we pick up so that it looks pretty straight and so this is why we started with a purl stitch um, for our ribbing right here okay so continue all the way up that right front and I'll see you when we get to the back of the neck here Okay, so I finished picking up stitches all along the right front. I have, I have reached my way all the way up to the back here. And so now along this side, we pick up a stitch for every stitch because we're knitting in the same direction. So you just insert your needle into that top V and Put your yarn over and through just as we did, but this time you're not skipping any stitches. Um, the ratio works out well because we're knitting in the same direction. So continue all the way across. Okay, I, I'm inserting my needle into the last stitch across the back here. Now it's time to turn and we're gonna continue doing what we did for the other side, for the right front, down the left front. So we're gonna insert our needle into that first stitch. One, two, skip a row three, one, two, skip a row, three. Okay, so you're gonna continue this all the way down till you get to the bottom ribbing. 
Okay, I'm nearing the end here, and I'm going to go into the last stitch, and then also the stitch down below here to help prevent that pulling that can happen when you have a um, when you have a ribbing on the bottom. Okay, so you know you can determine. I didn't really specify how many stitches to pick up. Everybody picks up stitches a little differently. I would just make sure you're um, picking up an even number of stitches so you can just do knit one, purl one. You can also do an odd number of stitches so you end with the same kind of stitch you started with. There are lots of different techniques. You can slip the first stitch to try to create a neater edge. I'm trying to keep this simple here. So I am simply going to start by um, knitting, knitting one and purling one, okay? So I'm just gonna start to knit and purl. And um, I actually didn't count my stitches. So if I end up with an odd number of stitches, I'm gonna end with a knit. If I did an even number of stitches, I will end with a purl. But again, the key is just to knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. So just keep that in mind. You should know you should be comfortable with ribbing now since you've did all since you've done all this ribbing at the bottom already. Okay, so now you just start working the one by one rib. And you do have oops, that is incorrect. You do have a lot of stitches on this needle here, so you're gonna want to make sure you um, have a long enough needle. This is a 40 um, a 40 inch circular needle. Okay, so I'll just show you once I get to the end of this really long, you can see it's a really long row here. Okay, it goes all the way over here. I'm just gonna zoom out here a little bit so you can see. But I started down here and it goes all the way across down to the other end. So um, I'll just show you what it looks like when I finished my first one by one rib row and then I need to turn over and do the second row. Okay, I'm just finishing up my first row here and I've got that last stitch, just be careful. You should have a piece of yarn there, the tail. Okay, so then you turn the work and now we are going to Purl the purl stitches and knit the knit stitches. So and you can always slip the first stitch if you'd like. I am just going to keep it simple here and do simple one by one rib, knitting the knit stitches, purling the purl stitches. That's a knit, that's a purl. Okay, so continue on till you reach your desired width for the collar. I'm going to continue on for three inches, just like I did for my bottom ribbing here. And then I'm going to make sure I have finished after a wrong side row so that I'm binding off on the right side of the work. Okay, so I will see you back here once it's time to bind off on the right side of the work. Okay, now I'm ready to bind off for the collar here. I just wanted to try to show you what it is looking like here. And I am binding off on the right side. And I did, um, it is just under three inches. My ribbing was a little over three inches, so it is a tad shorter just based on how I picked up stitches. Um, Okay, to bind off, you just bind off in pattern in the one by one rib as you go. So we're going to purl the first stitch since I um, am on a purl stitch and then I'm going to knit the next stitch. So I am working in pattern there, knit one, purl one. And then I am going to slip that first stitch over the second stitch. My next stitch is a purl, so I purl that. 
and I bind off. Knit, bind off, purl, bind off, knit, bind off, purl, bind off, and just Okay, I'm about done binding off for the collar here. And same thing, once you have one stitch, you just snip a tail that we will weave in later. And now we are done with the collar. And I'll just show you what it's looking like here. Okay, so we've got the collar in front here and we still have our sides open now is a good time to try on the cardigan and see how it's fitting you take a look at the armhole depth for your size um, for your measurements and make sure that lines up with how it's fitting on your arm if you want it to be a little snugger Maybe go down a little bit. If you want it to be bigger, you can go up. Just make sure you keep the stitch multiple in mind when you change that. Um, but this is why I like to knit the cardigan in this order so you can um, customize the sleeve circumference at this time, okay? Okay, so I've cast on my 41 stitches for my sleeve. I'm gonna turn the work and purl back and um, I am, we, when we knit this, we knit at the top of the sleeve and then we're gonna work our way down to the cuff. We will redo stitches for the cuff and then do our ribbing. So we're just starting a little differently for the sleeves. And again, each sleeve is made exactly the same. So I'm just gonna purl back. Okay, so I'm almost done purling all the way back here. And now I'm on the right side of the work and now I'm gonna begin, um, now I'm gonna begin row one of the staggered eyelet stitch and just continue on until I hit about 14 inches or until the length you want for your sleeve um, plus three inches. So I am gonna go probably for a total of about 18 inches. I'm gonna see how I'm gonna, do, oh, I'm sorry, 17 inches. Um, and, um, but the cuff is about three inches. So if I wanna go for a total of 17, I need to subtract three inches for 14. So I'm gonna work the staggered eyelet for 14 inches and then reduce for the cuff and add three inches for the cuff. So I will see you back here after I've worked my staggered eyelet. Again, I'm gonna start on row one and continue until I hit about 14 inches. Okay, so we'll see you back then. Okay, so I've knit my sleeve to the length that I want minus the length for the ribbing. So for me, that's about 14 inches and I'm gonna add three inches of ribbing. Um, you know, do what you need to do to fit the length of your arm. Um, and I ended after a row um, two or a row six to give myself some space to do the decrease now so I don't have a lot of eyelets in the way. So um, to reduce for the ribbing, you're going to want to make sure you end up with an even number of stitches. So I started off with an odd number. So I'm gonna just knit two together all the way to the end here to reduce for the cuff. I want a really tight cuff. If you don't want as tight of a cuff, you could do a knit one, knit two together, knit one, knit two together. But I like the look of um, kind of a wider sleeve with a sharp decrease for the cuff. So I'm gonna knit two together all the way to the end, and I'm gonna make sure I end up with an even number of stitches. But this is what it looks like to knit two together all the way to the end. So you're basically decreasing the stitch, stitch count by half. Okay, so I'll see you here at the end. 
Okay, so um, if I stop and I don't reduce any more, I will have an um, even number of stitches. I'll have 22 stitches. So I did um, a knit two together there, and then I'm just going to knit to the end um, for 22 stitches, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, okay? Um, and I just know from practice that that works well. Um, okay. So I am going to now just do a one by one rib. I'm going to start with a purl and do a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and continue that. Um, and then turn the work and do the same thing. Knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches so that I, um, So that I've got some great one by one rib going on here. And then I'm going to continue that for three inches and then bind off. Okay, I'm going to turn the work, continue my one by one rib. I started with a purl, so I start with the purl again because I have an even number of stitches. And the only reason why we have an even number of stitches is that so we end with a different stitch that we're starting with so that when you seam it up, that one by one rib looks even. So now you can see the ribbing start to come together. And again, just continue on until you have the length of the cuff that you would like. And then you can bind off. So I'll see you back here when I've got the cuff complete and I'm ready to bind off. Okay, I've completed the ribbing for the sleeve to the length I want, about three inches. Um, I went a tad over just so I could end up binding off on the right side. So I ended after a wrong side row, so I'm on the right side row. And I'm just going to bind off in my one by one rib. And I just lift that first stitch over the stitch I just knit, but I'm going to continue in the rib. So I still purl the purl stitches. I still knit the knit stitches, but I'm just lifting that first stitch over the stitch I just knit. I'm trying to bind off a bit looser than um, I normally would just so I've got some give at the cuff. Again, there's many different ways you can bind off. There's a stretchy bind off, Italian bind off. There's lots of different ways to bind off. Um, I tend to just like this kind of straight bind off method. It's just easy for me. I like my tension with this. It gives, I like the finished look that it, it has, but that's just me. But there are other ways you can bind off. Okay. And then when you get to the end, the end here, and you've got one stitch left again you just cut the tail i am going to cut a pretty generous tail that i can use to seam up the arm there and then you can just pull through like you did before and you have finished your sleeve okay so now you're going to make a second sleeve exactly how you just made this first sleeve start by casting on your stitches so i'm going to cast on my 41 stitches i'm going to knit to the exact same length reduce by knitting two together and then do my one by one rib for my cuff all right so i'll see you back here once i've got my second sleeve finished okay now it's time to seam the sleeve this is one of my finished sleeves to the body of the work so i laid my bot my front and my fronts and my back out flat I found the middle part, which is where the front and the back are seamed at the shoulder. And I lined up the middle of the sleeve with a removable stitch marker and kind of pinned it. And then I pinned the ends of the sleeves down the same length. So I know that I want my armhole depth to be eight inches. So my full width of my sleeve is 16 inches. So I measured eight inches down 
and pinned the ends eight inches down. So now I can start seaming. So you're gonna wanna take a pretty long strand of yarn. Um, doesn't need to be crazy long, but um, I don't know, a couple feet to make sure you are able to seam up. You have a long enough strand to seam up the sleeve to the body. So I've threaded my tapestry needle here with the yarn and all I'm gonna do is start down this side and I'm simply just gonna connect, I'm gonna go down and up. I'm just going to connect the work here right where I'm supposed to where I've marked it with my stitch marker. And I'm gonna remove the stitch marker now because I've connected the work on either side where I know it's supposed to be. So I'm just gonna remove that, set that aside. And now I'm gonna start seaming. And kind of the tricky thing is figuring out, it's not a one for one ratio. So you're gonna have to kind of figure out how to work this so that it lines up as best as you can. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see everything. And we are gonna start by going through the V, the V's on this side of the work here. So I've got a V on that side. And now typically when you seam up the work, going vertically here, you go through two bars. See, two bars here in between the first and the second stitch. Those two bars. So, but we're not always gonna go through two bars so we get our work to line up. So, I am going to go through two bars first I'm always going to go through each V on this side and you can do a right side up V or an upside down V. Okay, so you always go through one V on this side and then I'm kind of alternating, picking up one bar and then picking up two bars. So I just picked up one bar. So now I'm going to pick up two bars and it's all about how you knit, what your gauge is. You might have to switch this up. Okay, so I went through that V. Now I'm gonna go through this V. I just went through two bars. Now I'm gonna go through one bar over here. And I might have to change this up. Make sure you don't do that. Okay, go through the V. I'm gonna go through two bars now. So just, you know, see how it's laying and kind of make a judgment on alternating between two bars and one bar. You know, you might go um, and make sure you're realizing where you came out so you can go into the next one. Okay, so now I'm just seaming up and I'm going to continue and I'm gonna try to really make sure this lines up as best as I can. And I'm gonna go all the way to the end here. Okay, just trying to go through the bars of the work on this side and the V's on this side through the sleeve. So I go through the bars on the body on the front and the back. And then I go through the V's on the sleeve. And it doesn't matter if the V's go in this direction or the other direction, you just have to keep doing the same direction. And there you go. Okay, so I will see you back here once I've knit all the way, or I've seamed all the way towards the end here. Once you get to the center, you can remove this seam or the, the stitch marker, okay? So I'll see you back here in a little bit. All right, I'm nearing the end here. I've got a few more stitches left to seam up here. I'm gonna just go ahead and remove this. 
And then I'm going to go through the last few stitches and then I am going to take the tapestry needle off and now I have my sleeve seamed to the rest of the body. Okay, so now the seaming that's left to do, we're gonna um, seam up the sides of the sweater and the arms. This is the last little bit of seaming to do. All right, so you're gonna lay the work like this and you might have long enough ends. I don't have long enough end there. Um, you might have long enough ends, I do on my arm, to start seaming the body. If you are um, kind of new at seaming, you might want to start at the bottom and seam up to the armpit and then start from the sleeve and go to the armpit instead of doing one long line, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I will just show you how to get started. Um, I'm gonna just start with the sleeve because I've got long enough piece of yarn here. So you just thread the tapestry needle again. And you're gonna start at the sleeve and I'm just simply gonna connect, zoom in. I'm simply just going to connect the two pieces at the corner. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through two bars after that first stitch on this side. And then I'm going to go through two bars on this side. And then you continue that all the way up. And it looks a little different once you get to the body because you'll be going through two stockinette stitches. We're going through one purl stitch and one stockinette stitch. So it's a little different here. Trying to give you the best angle here. Yeah, and you just want to make sure you're going back into near where you came out. And we're just working after the first and the last stitches from the rows of the sleeve. And we're just slowly working our way up here one bar, two bars. Okay, so that's what the sleeve starts to look like. Okay, and then I'll show you what to do once we get to kind of the main stitch area. Okay, so I finished seaming the cuff part and now I'm kind of on the main body of the sleeve and you want to make sure you're going through two bars after that very first stitch. Get the rest of the work out of the way. Okay, so two bars after that very first stitch on one side and the same thing on the other side, but just make sure that's where the stitch came out. So you just are making sure you're going back in the next area where you came out. So I came out there, so now I'm going to go through these two bars on this side. Okay, so you do that all the way up till you get to the armpit. And then you can end it and then work the same way up the body of the work. Start with the ribbing, seaming up the ribbing and then seam up the main body and end at the armpit. OK, 
Okay, and you can start to pull it and your work should line up like the eyelets should be at the same place. It might take a few tries for you to really get this and get everything to line up the way you want. But um, like I said, I would suggest just continuing this to the armpit, ending it, and then seaming up the body and meeting, starting at the base of the body and seaming up to the armpit and then ending it in the armpit. So I will see you back here once I am finished seaming everything. Okay guys, I have finished seaming the sides and the arms on both sides. And now I've got a ton of ends to weave in. So what you're gonna wanna do is um, take your tapestry needle and put your ends through the tapestry needle and you're gonna wanna weave these in. The, the ends that are close to the seams, I kind of just tend to weave through the seam itself there. And then you just kind of pull it through, stretch it out, and then I just kind of snip it close to the seam there. Um, and pretty much all of these should be close to a seam, like on the inside. Um, so just take your ends and start weaving them in just as I've shown you. The ones that are down at the bottom, you know, you can just again weave through the seam there. That's how I like to weave in most of my ends. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the sweater. Um, it's a fun knit and um, I hope you wear it and you love it. Thanks for watching, guys.